Hello, good evening. I'm not sure if my camera is visible because I, it seems there is some issue with my camera on the Zoom. Otherwise, my camera is working fine, but I can't see my picture. Can you see my picture? Anybody in the chat box, if some of you can say yes or no? Yeah, so I don't know why my camera is not working. So we'll proceed. Good evening, everybody. No worries. So uh, you can't see me, but I will talk. Not visible. Yeah, okay. I don't know. We will, uh, we will settle this. This is a technology issue. I don't know. Every day it works fine. Today it is not working fine. Thank you so much for joining in. And uh, can I have the city name from where you have joined? Uh, if you can mention in the chat box the city from where you have logged in. Kashmir, Raipur, Baroda, Pune. Chennai, Bangalore, Kolkata, Pune, Ahmedabad, Delhi, Havla, Mumbai, Pune. Lovely. More of you, Mumbai, Pune. Okay, lovely. Durgapur, Shimoga, Bhubaneswar, Thane, Dhule. All right. Perfect. Okay, so we'll start. So what I will do today is that, and can you confirm if you can see the presentation? <clears throat> can I have seen uh, some confirmation? Can you see my presentation? Perfect, okay. So as always, I will keep my program short and I will begin. And uh, today, uh, what I'm doing is, I recently read a book, The Almanac of Naval Ravi Khan. This is the book review and my learnings and I will share some of my thoughts. Uh, before I start, all credits given to Naval Ravi Kant and the author of the book, Eric Jorgensen. So there's no attempt to, to copy his material. It's just for public knowledge and information. I'm doing this session and I strongly recommend you buy this book and you read. For that matter, Naval Ravi Kant has offered to all, his, all the readers to download this book free of cost in the PDF form from his website. And of course, if you want to buy, you can buy this book also. So it's a very novel intent of uh, Naval Ravi Kant. And if you have any question, you can write me on the Q&A box and maybe I can take some questions later on. I will see. Keep these questions related to this book also. Today, I'm not going to answer any other question apart from this uh, book review session. Okay, so let's start. So uh, <laughs> why I have chosen this book and you should uh, know. So I will give you a brief background of who Naval Ravi Kant is. This book was referred to me by three people. And so I could not stop myself buying this book immediately and read it. Of course, it was pending from a lot of time. Naval Ravi Kant was born in 1974 in India, Delhi. He moved to <clears throat> Queens, New York in 1985 at the age of nine, graduated in 1995 at age 21 and he started his first company in the age of at the age of 25 founder of opinions at the age of 27 he started uh, a venture capital company uh, um, and then uh, he founded another company at the age of 29 and uh, at the age of 32 another company a small vc fund uh, at the age of 7 34 he launched angel list at the age of 34, he invested in Uber. Uh, at the age of 43, in the year 2018, he was named Angel Investor of the Year. Big man, made a lot of money, lives a good life. And that is it about Noel Ravi Kant. The first message in the book is to embrace accountability. And he says that, you know, people grow if they are accountable. And uh, he suggests that if you want to grow professionally, personally, and socially, you have to accept responsibility and take onus of things that you do. And I will be very short. I have 20, 30 messages to cover. Reading is faster than listening and doing is faster than writing, watching. Some of these uh, thoughts which I'm going to share with you is basically, uh, uh, just give me a moment. It's basically self-explanatory. So I may not give you a complete uh, uh, answer to all the quotations. You have to self 
understand it okay reading is faster than listening and doing is faster than watching so the main idea here is that you know rather than watching other people do things you have to start doing things on your own find your hourly rate another big message big message in the book is that find i don't know why my slides are moving just give me one more moment let me correct the slide so i recently made this slide okay now it should work okay find your hourly rate big message what he says is that identify your hourly rate is 1000 10000 maybe a lakh maybe 10 lakh rupees an hourly rate fix that rate for yourself in life and anything which is cheaper than that delegate it to someone else and he says that he did this 10 years ago and today uh, he did not regret it and he says that you know uh, i actually underestimated my hourly rate a very big message the whole idea is that delegate everything which doesn't fit into the hourly rate that you keep for yourself another big message become the best in the world at what you do and uh, and and what he means is that you do need to be deep in something because otherwise you will be a mile wide and an inch deep and you won't get what you want out of life you can only achieve mastery in one or two things it is usually the things that you are obsessed about so you must have read it everywhere become the best in the world at what you do but he literally means it become the best so we have understood compound interest in the parlance of uh, investments but he talks about compound interest in the parlance of your own personal life and reputation so compound interest also happens in your reputation and he gives a brilliant example i will read it from the book i love working with elad because i know when the deal is being done he will bend over backwards to give me extra <clears throat> he will always round off in my favor if there is an extra dollar being delivered here or there if there is some cost to pay he will pay it out of his own pocket and he won't even mention it to me because he goes so far out of his way to treat me so well i send him every deal i have i try to include him in everything then i go out of my way to try and pay for him compounding in those relationships is very valuable unbelievable statement unbelievable so you know uh, you need to work with people who respect you and you respect what you want in life is to be in control of your time talks a lot about time so you need to do things so that ultimately your objective should be to have control over your time i love this and very strong message and i will give you an example he writes in the book rewards rewards are not proportionate to your expertise they are disconnected and highly skewed in favor of those who are good so this is also related to winners take all thought process you know so for example in a competition uh the winner is probably 10% better than uh, the runners up but the prize is 100% more no for example in lawn tennis if you get a million dollar to win wimbledon uh, the finalist wins just half a million dollars although the difference between the winner and the loser is just one point just one shot so the difference is not large but that one shot that 1% that 2% extra expertise that you have in life your reward will be disproportionate so and he talks about this again and again and again in the book that if you are 10% better than the other person you can take home 100% more if you are 20% better than the other person uh, you can take 1000% more and then he gives example of some of the ceos of the world who are raking in hundreds and millions of dollars every year and he says that they are not good 100 times they are good two times three times five times of who you are but but the stakes are really very large because when when the when it is a matter of a millions of dollars of losses and profits and the ceo is taking a decision and if he gets it right 80% of the time and the other person is getting right 70% of the time then he is supposed to get hundreds of millions of dollars more 
So rewards are not proportional to your expertise. They are disconnected. So whatever you are doing, you have to be the best in that business. And then your reward will be 10 times, 20 times, 100 times of the other person who is not as good as you. Big message. Earn with your mind, not your time. Of course, so when you read several books, the message pops up again and again, these kind of messages, health, time, relationships and stuff, but stuff. But he, he writes beautifully and he says that, you know, earn with your mind, not your time. If you sell your time, you will never be able to probably uh, grow very large. Again, be at the extreme in your art. Whatever you are doing, you have to be the number one in that particular profession, job, business, whatever you're doing. Again, I mean, I don't want to explain this. When I read this, I underlined this. And he says, play stupid games with stupid rewards. I hope you get it. He wants us to get out of the race. He wants us to do things very differently and uh, not in the mainstream. Play stupid games where the rewards can be insane. Definition of retirement. When you stop sacrificing today for an imaginary tomorrow. Beautiful example. All of us needs to learn from this. When you stop sacrificing today for an imaginary tomorrow, you are already retired. So there's no reason to stop working. On luck. Being lucky happens after you achieve trust of others, reliability, integrity, and think long term. So think about your profession, the job that you're doing. Have you got the trust of other people? Are you working with reliability? Do you, do you have integrity? And do you think long term? And if you do all these things, you get lucky. And actually, there's nothing called luck. It is all because of your hard work over the last 10, 20 years. Now, amazing message. You know, you have to get it by yourself. I don't want to explain this. Sharks eat well, but live a life surrounded by sharks. Beautiful. So, you know, there's plenty of food out there. But you have to have the expertise. You have to have the fighting spirit. You have to live a life every moment. You will be surrounded by competition. You will be surrounded by people who are as smart as you and, and still you will get your food. Beautiful message. Again, the same thing, time versus money. You don't get rich by spending your time to save money. You get rich by saving your time to make money. So save your time, save your time, use technology, delegate, save your time. And this way, everyone wins, you know, uh, everyone wins. Another powerful message, the more you know, the less you diversify. So if you're doing multiple businesses or you are making multiple investments and you are doing multiple things in life, you know, think about a painter, you know, he does only one thing, he paints. Think about a writer, he does only one thing, writes. Think about a doctor or a lawyer. They do only one thing and they do it the best they know. Think about Warren Buffet in the world of investment. He only invests in equities and long term. <clears throat> Another very powerful message. If you can't decide, the answer is no. I hope you get it. If you can't decide, the answer is no. So many times in life, we are undecided. We are undecided. Well, in that case, the answer is no. And, and in case he says that if you are evenly split on a difficult decision, take the path more painful in the short term. You see, we know this, but the way he explains, a self-made man, unbelievable. If you're evenly split on a difficult decision, take the path more painful in the short term. Read a lot, just read. Reading science, math, and philosophy, one hour per day, that's it, one hour per day, will likely put you at the upper echelon of human success within seven years. I strongly believe in this. And I have been also telling that you should uh, allocate at least an hour, an hour every day. 
read whatever, and he says, specify science, maths, and philosophy. In seven years, he says that you will reach the upper echelon of human success. Powerful statement, big statement. Confucius says you have two lives. And the second one begins when you realize you have only one. The question is when and how did your second life begin? Sorry. Real winners are the ones who step out of the game entirely, who don't even play the game, who rise above it. I mean, it's deep. I think the message is get out of competition. Get out of competition. This is unbelievable. And this is, uh, this is tough. Play single player games. Perhaps one reason why yoga and meditation are hard to sustain is that is they have no extrinsic value. The other person doesn't give you any advantage. That there's no competition there. Uh, the other person is not getting any advantage when you are doing your own yoga and meditation. It's a purely single player game. Unbelievable. So get out of competition. Get out of playing games. Play your own game with yourself. If you can't see yourself working with someone for life, don't work with them for a day. Uh, so when you choose your uh, kind of life partner, or you choose your partner, or your partner, business partner, anyone, if you can't see working with them for life, don't work them work with them for a day. So the whole message he gives is that you should get wisdom and apply those wisdom every day in your life to cut short the span of your life in terms of being successful, uh, uh, both health-wise as well as wealth-wise. One month of consistent yoga, and I feel 10 years younger, to stay flexible is to stay young. And this is the last slide. And then I will read some passages of the book which I have marked, which I think you will like it. If there is something you want to do later, do it now. There is no later. So don't put your goals for tomorrow. I think this, this is where I want to start. Uh, and a lot of people have joined. If you have any questions, if you uh, and uh, please do give me your feedback on the chat box. How was this? On the basis of your feedback, I will consider doing other book reviews. Uh, uh, and maybe you will like it. I have recorded this. Maybe at some point of time, I will put it on YouTube. Any questions? Let me read some of the passages in the book. Uh, okay. So he says that 99% of the things that you do in life is waste. Only 1% is useful. The important thing is to identify that 1% and go all in. He uses the word go all in and forget about the rest. Uh, another passage. He says, Warren Buffett, he gives example of Warren Buffett and says, we waste our time with short-term thinking and busy work. Warren Buffett spends a year deciding and a day acting. That act lasts decades. And you know, I, I said this and I will read this. Imagine someone comes along who demonstrably has slightly better judgment. They are right 85% of the time instead of 75%. You will pay them 50 million, 100 million, 200 million, whatever it takes because 10% better judgment. Steering a $100 billion ship is very valuable. CEOs are highly paid because of their leverage. A small difference in judgment and capability really gets amplified. Spend more time making big decisions. These, there are basically three really big decisions you make in your life, early in, in your early in your life, where you live, who you are with, and what you do. Uh, again, okay. 
three more things more and then I will stop if you have any question. I may answer or maybe close. It gives an example of Charlie Munger. As long as I have a book in my hand, I don't feel like I'm wasting time. So uh, my camera is not working today. So there is nothing on the screen. So don't worry about it. And he says, 117, okay. And he says, if any author is writing a book to make money, don't read it. If somebody is kind of writing a book because he wants to make some money, don't read it. It is not about educated versus uneducated. It is about who likes to read and who doesn't like to read. So find an answer for yourself. And, uh, and one final message I will leave you with. This is beautiful. One day I realized with all these people I was jealous of, I couldn't just choose little aspects of their life. I couldn't say I want his body. I want her money. I want his personality. You have to be that person. Do you want to actually be that person with all of their reactions, their desires, their family, their happiness level, their outlook on life? their self-image, if you're not willing to do a wholesale 24-7, 100% swap with that person, then there is no point in being jealous. There's no point in competing. So you can't take bits and pieces of the other person. You have to have a complete swap. And I don't think many of us would like to have a complete swap with any other person in the world. I think that is it, uh, friends. Um, this is what I wanted to share. You have to read the complete book. It was a real joy to read this book. And amazing messages. And um, I personally learned a lot from this book. And uh, with this, I, I will say thank you to all of you. If uh, And uh, let me see if there is any question. Okay, so how many books I read? So. Typically, uh, uh, I attempt to read an hour a day, sometime more. And with that speed, I'm able to finish three to four books a month. Rajiv Mishra, you have this book, yes. Okay, Naganath, thank you. Uh, 